Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Monday evening conversation, our Reflections on the Rock. It's a great joy to have with us today Chelsea Barry, whose um, voice you will certainly know. If you are regular um, in worship online or in person, you'll know Chelsea's voice. And we're thrilled that she's here to have a conversation with us today. And so welcome. And Chelsea has been going through... Um, a life experience that we all go through and um, wants to share a little bit about how it has impacted her and what it's been like. And hopefully we can all relate. I know I can. Go. Thank you, thank you Margaret, and thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, I just love it here and I just love what you're doing and the reflections that I watch um, each week are, are always, um, they always resonate on some mm. level. So it's it's really cool to be here. So thank you. Um, I was really um, honored that, that to have the opportunity to come and sit and talk with you, not only because I just love the sound of your voice, but um, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> doesn't both ways I love you, the sound <laughs> of your voice. Um, it's been six months since my sweet dad uh, passed away. And um, I have been so fortunate to to have the the covenant family around me but um it has been such uh an interesting hmm. experience yeah um this this grief yeah. stuff and um i have certainly felt loss as as we all have um but i can say that there has never been anything that has um impacted me so holistically so deeply in, this one. in every way yeah um and one of the things that i reflect on daily is the grief with the grace hmm. and yeah. gratitude all sort oh. of if you were to sort of look at this in a venn diagram i think yeah. you would probably see god yeah the trinity right in all the those three Overlapping circles, and that little one in the middle would be the yes, divine. Right. Yeah, at least, and and my my brain often you know outlines and diagrams things, and that's mm. sort of how I mm -hmm. how I've been experiencing this. Um, and that is not to say that it has not been treacherous, oh. um, but um, I am amazed at the learning mm -hmm. um, when I when I sort of give this grief that I'm experiencing space. In my life and in my day and voice um, and a voice all the time and I don't try to push mm -hmm. it aside or stuff it down I just bring it right along with me like it's you know mm -hmm. driving next to me in the car um, it's I've observed how it's how it's sort of manifested mm -hmm. and and as that happens I'm also seeing the humanity um, the the love um, the um, the related relatability I don't know what that word might be but um, of people around me and, and how relevant it is to other people yeah how connected we all are absolutely everybody experiences it somehow or other differently absolutely. everybody does it differently. it is about the most unique experience you can you can have I mean I think it's you know right down to our DNA I think it's um, it's extremely unique extremely personal but it is something that we all um, that we all go through or, or will go through um, and and as dark as sometimes may be, um, and I and I'll tell you, Margaret, I'm I'm a pretty happy person. Mm -hmm. I know you intrinsically. Are. I'm just you know, yeah. there's always something good. I'm yeah. one of those you know, glass half full, silver. Well, that's why people. you've got two other GRs: <laughs> gratitude and grace. Right. Because it, you need that to balance yourself. Absolutely. There, but there have but been some dark some days. Dark, dark days. Where you don't feel the grief. They, you only feel the grief. You only feel the grief. Yeah. Um, but as dark as those days have been, um, there there is light. And um, I, I always think of the, um, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Cast Away with Tom Hanks. Oh. But when he comes back from the island, he says um, to his buddy, you know, how did you, you know, how did you get through this? And he said, I realized that as bad as it gets, um, tomorrow the sun will rise. Yeah. And um, there is always, you know, there's always a path forward. So that's sort of, that's what's been on my mind a lot, obviously. Wow. And do you have any idea why this particular grief is different from other griefs? Is it the closest one you've ever had? Or is it because of your life stage? Or because you're more aware of yourself now? Or what? 
Why do you think this one's different? I think you just made another Venn diagram in my <laughs> all Maybe, those things. Yeah, I didn't, yeah they all, I've got my little, little bit of everything going here. <laughs> Um, I think there's a, um, it's a great question with a couple of different answers. Um, number one, my father um, was a very, very strong um, presence. He, since my earliest days, kind of was a regulator um, for me, whether, mm. you know, um, I've, I've always sort of had a sense of, of not belonging, or maybe I was like the, the chubby kid in gym class that didn't yeah. get picked. There was mm -hmm. always that growing up stuff, but with dad, I was always sort of the you know, the light in the room for him. And he was um, always very vocal in his support and his love. And he was unbelievably consistent. Um, and he huh. was he was present. Um, Dad would, you know, would stop by the house um, whenever the heck he felt like it, often uh -huh. bringing donuts just to, uh -huh. you know, make, make <laughs> <excuse>. his auntie. <laughs> just thought it was just driving by. Um, but we had, a, we had an incredible closeness. Um, and he was... You know, and and he was a just a connecting point for my family, my my siblings and I. Um, so, and and I think also at this time in in my life, um, our relationship went while it was always father daughter. He became um, a kind of a, a pal, mm -hmm. and he was close to my husband, and um, we often did things together. You know, and we just had a very very good relationship and. And when he passed away, it was not expected. Uh -huh. um, it wasn't sudden as in a tragic, you know, accident, right. but it was not expected. Mm -hmm. And um, there has been for quite some time the, the feeling that his absence is, his, is taking up even more space than his presence did. Because yes. it is this That's sort right. of slowly letting go of the lunches mm -hmm. and the holidays and yeah. the conversations and the check-ins and yeah. The, yeah. the random stop-bys. And so um, I think it just it, it's just hitting all of, those all of these things. Right. Um, and it's sort of an awakening to this life without him here. Mm -hmm. And... And learning to accept a life with him sort of in this energy that I imagine him to be now. Right. Um, so right. I'm, I'm just kind of going through that process. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What do you um, miss most about him? Oh, Dad, gosh. Um, <laughs> his um, poetic heart. His, huh? his gosh, nature. That, I wasn't expecting that one. It is very true, and, and anyone that knows Dad would know. In fact, when I gave his eulogy at his funeral, um, one of the things that I made sure to mention was um, I have this reel in my head um, of the things that he used to say to me. Yeah. And I think many, many people walking the earth have trauma in their lives, and they hear the nasty things over, you know, right. throughout their years, or they hear um, belittling or, you know. Mm -hmm. For me, I have a, a tape of... Hiya, Cakes. Did I tell you how much I love you today? Oh. Have I told you how proud I am of you? And yeah. he just kind of had this like schmaltzy, you know, dorky yeah. way, dorky yeah. dad way of of affirming. Yeah. And um, you know, gosh, do you know how proud I am? And this is the reel that I, that plays in my head. Wow. And so when um, and what a gift, what oh. a gift to have that on on mm -hmm. repeat. But um, I miss those little moments where I'd say, oh, daddy, you want to come, you know, check out the new garden. Gosh, you know, just so proud of what you've done to the garden. Wow. You know, and you're like, oh. So it, it was a lot of, a lot of that. I just, I miss that sweetness. Yeah. Um, and the affirmation. Oh, it was just wonderful. And he was kind, Margaret. He was so kind. And, we, you know, we joke because um, every, he loved to go to, you know, diners and get his, you know, little oh. diner breakfast with his buddies. And we'd pick on him for flirting with the servers, but he was, it was very, you know, oh, don't you look nice today? And what a lovely smile. And it was always a very authentic, kind mm -hmm. um, expression to anyone. Mm -hmm. And he would always make you feel better. Yeah. yeah. So I miss that. Yeah. There's not a lot of people walking around that have that ability. Right. And dad was a master. Yeah. Wow. And I'll tell you that after he passed away, I realized I did not necessarily have the tr that trait that he had, uh -huh. at least not on his level, and I probably yeah. never will. However, one of the ways that I keep his spirit alive and I honor his spirit um, is by being more kind. Yeah. 
to people. Yeah. And, and something that wasn't necessarily in my nature mm -hmm. um, needed to be very deliberate at first, but now oh, it feels yes. a little bit easier. More natural. And, yeah. I, and I love the feeling of just being nicer to people. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of cool. Well, and it's much <laughs> needed in this world right now. There's not a lot of kindness walking around there. I agree. Oh, well, you know, and again, I've, I'm a work in progress and I always will be. Uh, but that is one thing that I, I appreciate about his, um, you know, what he yeah. did for me and what he gave me was that right. ability. Right. Yeah. And so where is, in, in this Venn diagram, <laughs> uh, I was going to say Zen, but it's kind of Zen, but this Venn diagram, um, what ways have you seen the connection between each of these circles and God oh. that you said was in the middle? Where have you experienced that? Oh, it's, it is such a, an energy. Um, what a great question. The, so number one is the grace mm -hmm. um, that I, I see from others in, in the biggest and in smallest ways. Um, and I, I believe with my whole, whole heart that God is love. Mm -hmm. God is love. I mean, it's the simplest way that I understand God is mm -hmm. love. And so when I feel grace in the moments when I maybe don't deserve it, mm -hmm. when I'm certainly not asking for it, um, when I'm not looking for it, it's just this little thing that happens, I think. My goodness, I wouldn't, it, it, it has carried me through um, through those dark days. Right. Um, and growing up with, with a, a, a close relationship with God, um, the gratitude, I know how important that is. I know mm. I feel it in my bones. Yeah. And um, I want to be the grace that I hope to receive from others in those dark moments. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it's just noticing. Um, you yeah, I and, and I do believe that if you look for if you look for negativity, you will you find, find it. it. You find what you focus on. That's exactly. Right. And if you look for grace, you will find it. And um, so this whole experience and has set me on this path where I, I I've become a lot more um, uh, in tune to the the good things that people do. Right. So that's been. And um, does really it also cool. make you attuned to when you see people suffering? Absolutely. There's a empathy. Um, I feel like I've always I've always had a pretty you know good understanding of empathy, but um, but I think you know understanding this whole just getting this whole perspective knowing full well that I you know if I if if I'm having a really really difficult time and I'm crying and or I'm I'm pouting or I'm silent somebody could easily look at me and say geez what the heck is wrong with her somebody could also look at me and say geez it looks like she's having a really tough time maybe yeah. you know maybe I'll be nice yeah. And it's it it doesn't hurt the person observing either right. in either way, but right. it just isn't it isn't it a great thing to to give somebody the benefit of the doubt? So um, that's been a you know a little bit of a shift in my perspective. Yeah, yeah. If that makes any sense. Oh, it makes perfect sense because you you um, any time I think that we're suffering, whatever it is, um, you you know it when you see it in somebody else. Oh, and there's nothing that tugs on my, you know, um, empathy, you know, strings more yeah. than, than people suffering, mm -hmm. truly feeling, um, just sadness, you know, mm -hmm. especially when they are, you know, in situations that are beyond their control. Um, although I, I still empathize for people with people that have made errors in, in their choices and feel yeah. sadness as a result. I don't think, you know, I don't, yeah. it's not my place to judge you either way. Um, but I do feel a tremendous amount of empathy and I've also learned, um, when I, based on what I have felt most comforting when I have been the saddest, um, the words that people say, the actions that people take, yeah. um, has been a huge, uh, awakening yeah. because, um, it's taught me what might be helpful when I see people. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's just sort of been this this really interesting circle in you know in learning experience, um, and and I'm grateful for it. I think yeah. it my eyes are open to so much more. I I am sad. I miss my dad. I wish he was here. There is nothing I would do, uh, or nothing I wouldn't do, but he's not here. Right. So and I still am. 
Yeah. So um, I think grief gives us an opportunity to um, to grow. Yeah. And man, it's it's a it's a painful growth, but it yeah. is it is growth. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. But I can't let you go nope. without asking about music. Mm. You're such a um, singer <laughs> for us all, and um, has that does music help in the process? <sighs> Music is, um, you know, music is, is the sound of, of feelings and emotions. It is, it is poetry that, that dances. It is everything that, that connects me, um, and you mm. know, that sort of, you know, grounds me. Mm. Um, music is such a huge, huge part of that. Um, and that has been a part of my life since I can remember. Mm -hmm. Um, it, I have, um, on days that I feel, and I, and I would tell anybody that is going through a, a grieving process, um, don't, don't be afraid to listen to those sad songs. Yes. Um, it's yes. okay. So don't be afraid to cry and mm -hmm. maybe have a moment of, of wallowing. Um, mm -hmm. Because if, it, if you don't give it that space, you know, music can be the voice yes. of that, that right. moment. The voice of the hurt. Absolutely. The voice of the grace and the voice of the gratitude. It comes, yes, yeah, either so way. I'm so grateful. Yeah, God's voice. Absolutely. And then on the flip side of that, um, you know, there is music that makes you feel uplifted and happy and joyful and the sun shines a little bit brighter. So it's music is incredibly, I don't, incredibly important to me, um, not to just perform it, but to absorb it, to listen to it. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it exists in, in so many different, you know, places. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very important part of, yeah. Of every, of every one of my days, and and was and my dad was a huge uh, supporter of um, of the music that I that I personally uh, like to make and music in general. He was always singing and making up songs and oh, you remember this old one, yeah. you know? And then we'd break out into songs. So yeah, that's yeah. you know uh, a big part of who I am. Wow. Well, thank you for your gift of music here. The church has been huge for the rest of us. Because very often it does something that you sing or that Kevin plays or, or that everybody does, one of our, any of our music ministry people, um, can be the voice of God for somebody else. Oh, and it's yes. such a, whoa, how did you know I needed that today, you know? I always yeah. pull a little, whenever I hear somebody singing or whenever we're here or in any of the songs that I'm singing, I always, there's always something Mm -hmm. um it just oh i really needed that i really needed that and if you're listening like you know it's like one of those things if you're looking for it you'll find it yes um yeah. and to talk about grace i mean you come in here and there's a lot of times i i'm singing these songs and i think oh i don't know if i'm gonna do this too well and it doesn't matter i walk off and and kevin says thank you you know that was great or I, i'm so glad to be able to do this with you and the vanity and the ego just comes right out of it because it just becomes a, an experience, you know, that we, and I love it. I'm so grateful for it. Yeah. I really am. So thank Me you. too. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank I appreciate you. that for sharing that. And um, we'll be back again next Monday with another um, conversation. And if you ever want to give us the benefit of your conversation, then get in touch with us here at Covenant. And we'll see you on a Wednesday or Friday for evening prayer as well. Good night.